guys. <clears throat> Can you hear me? I'll share this uh, link. Very soon, nearly there, I think. <clears throat> That's it, yeah, we're good. <clears throat> Can somebody um, copy and paste the link I'm about to, um, well, it's the link to this video. Can somebody share this and put it in um, any of the, the um, other videos you might be in at the moment or on Facebook. I better get cracking with this. Right, only six people, not surprisingly. Who's here then? Hi, Chris Norgrove. Yeah, landscape mode is the best, I agree. Well, give it a couple of minutes, allow people to come along. <clears throat> So how are we all so far? Well, we've got 16 people now. Cheers, Richard. Richard's um, doing some moderating for me today. What happened? Oh, people are sending me messages from the other <coughs> attempted live stream videos, which are still up there, but people are still waiting in there. I hope they come into this, um, this universe. Hello, Tony. Hello, Steph. I don't do deliveries, I'm afraid. Hi, Julie. Hi, JNA from California. Oh, thanks, Exit 11. Cheers, thank you very much for sharing to the Secret Curry Club. What a palaver, it's annoying, because you, you have to actually create the, um, type in the details for the live stream. Um, in when the phone's actually in a landscape mode. I don't, what had happened is I set it up when I was just using it in vertical mode, um, assuming that I could just turn the phone, um, you know, clockwise and it would sort everything out. It's very frustrating. YouTube aren't very good at this at the moment. Okay, we've got 20 people. Let's, let's um, kind of make a start on this. Right, today we're cooking a Cali Merch Curry from volume two of Indian Restaurant Curry at Home. Um, it's a recipe I've created because I, I like black pepper and you don't really see many black pepper curry recipes on Indian restaurant menus. And so I sort of got, in my usual way, sort of got the back of an envelope and a, a pen and just scribbled down a few ideas and kind of mulled it over. And I came up with a combination of ingredients that uh, that um, would work together. Uh, not least is cream, cream and black pepper. I'm sure most of you know. If you've had, ever had a steak with black pepper and cream sauce, you don't know what you're missing. Right, so that's Indian Restaurant Curry at Home Volume 2, available at Amazon and all other good places, uh, Spicy Joe's and Waterstones, etc. Uh, volume 1. Is also available, of course. Um, you can find more details on these at mrricardo.com. You'll see all the uh, links in the YouTube description below. Also, the recipe for this Cali Merch Curry is in um, is on my website. The link is below also. So we can start. Let's get cooking. Stop faffing about. Okay, gonna add about three, three and a half to four. That's about three, really. Three tablespoons of of oil. I'm using sunflower oil. 
use whatever you want within reason. Great. I see we've got some base gravy bubbling away here. We'll be using that. So while the oil is heating up, or once the oil is heated up, we're going to add these um, coarsely ground black peppercorns which are toasted first then used to pestle and mortar but let me just make sure they're quite quite um coarsely ground i'm using a sort of start off with a sort of medium flame really in with some fennel seeds and cumin seeds the exact measurements for these are on the website and in the book of course So we're going to let those sizzle away, they're all quite, not quite hot enough yet. I'm going to let the oil infuse, get infused with the flavour. So it's sizzling away. Normally I'd use um, a higher flame than this or, or a bigger hob, a bigger um, ring to cook. but. Uh, I want to take a bit of time over this so I can talk and not uh, lose focus on what I'm saying. I'm reading, but normally I'd be using this um, <clears throat> this gas ring here, which is more powerful and you can cook it quicker, basically. You get higher temperature, <clears throat> better camera caramelization. But for the sake of uh, you know demonstration, I'm just using this. So is anyone, <clears throat> is anyone cooking along there? We had a few last time. I'm wondering if anyone's uh, got all the ingredients ready and uh, cooking away. All right, so that's been cooking for 30 seconds or so. I'm going to add some very finely chopped onion. That's about about 80 or 90 grams I think of that. It's roughly a half a large onion, half a medium large onion. Yeah, let that cook down for a bit. Cheers Julie. Julie just ordered um, volume one, thank you very much. So it ran out of stock actually a few days ago. Fortunately, they, they replenished very quickly. <laughs> I'm just reading a comment um, on one of the ghost, um, uh, one of the previous attempts at a live stream that, that we had to restart, somebody commented, oh, you should get a decent camera like Latif's, he's brill. Yeah, he's brill. And, and I'm, I'm sure he's got a great camera as well. It makes me laugh. Get them evenly, evenly cooked. Maybe slightly browned on the edges, but the main thing is to soften and cook out the rawness. Now for this, I'm going to use some um, chicken in this, and I'm actually going to use some cauliflower as well because I've got some. I thought it'd go quite well with this cauliflower and black pepper. I think it's a great combination. So what I've done, um, which I haven't done this before in a video, in a live video, so I've just taken some chicken thighs, raw chicken thighs, and I've simmered them in the base gravy for. Uh, you know, for 10 minutes, not fully cooked yet through, but they will be by the time, you know, the curry's done. Uh, lovely, um, lovely flavour. It's just a bit easier to do. You don't get quite the depth of flavour you get with pre-cooking, but each to his own. This is what I did this time. Ah, Paul. Paul Burrows has arrived. Hello, Paul. Yeah, finally found you. 
Well, we've got 48 people watching, which is respectable. I think earlier this year we had, um, God, there was almost a thousand people at one point watching one of the videos. I don't know what happened there, but it seems to go viral, but we haven't had that many since. Well, that's coming along nicely, the, the onion's starting to brown a little bit. We're going to add some ginger garlic paste. So, for anyone who's just joined, hello, we're cooking a Kelly Merch um, black pepper chicken and cauliflower curry today. We've just put the uh, black pepper and some whole spices, some finely chopped onion and now some ginger garlic paste in the pan, we're going to cook that off, I'm going to keep an eye on that to make sure that the ginger and garlic paste doesn't stick and burn to that end, I'll turn the heat down very slightly. Hi Jim, um, it asked me are you thinking of cooking with Dan again? Yeah I'd love to, yeah we, we, we talk you know, quite often. And um, you know, definitely would be up for that. I think uh, I'd certainly enjoy having a few beers with it. Yeah, back. Yeah, apologies to anyone who's um, just joined and was wondering what the hell was going on before. Uh, I had to sort of, through trial and error, um, redo the live stream on a different video because the orientation wasn't right, but we, we got there in the end. All right, enough chat for now. All right, and I'm going to add uh, some chilli powder, mixed powder, kasuri methi, salts, uh, and a touch of garam masala. I'm going to fry those off, 20 to 30 seconds or so. We don't want this to burn, but we want to properly cook a pound of spices. So give them time to cook. I'm going to splash just a little tiny bit of base gravy. The water content in the base gravy we just added will evaporate pretty quickly, but during that time it'll still be frying. And then getting up to the right temperature. And it's smelling amazing. I wish you could smell this. Yeah, cute. Um, too bad I can't smell this right now. Cheers from Berlin. Great, we've got an international audience today. So that's, that's about right. We're gonna add about two tablespoons of uh, tomato paste, which in my case is, um, well, it's about half a tablespoon of tomato puree mixed with three tablespoons of water. Don't add it as pure, all as the puree. Now, it's reassuring to add tomato paste in now because it deglazes the pan and, and limits the risk of burning. You could use blended chopped tomatoes, blended fresh tomatoes, or passata if you want it instead. It's, all the details are on them um, in my books, but there's also a, a recipe for tomato paste in on, on the website, mysteryricardo.com, which um, explains, you know, explains everything you need to know. Not much tomato paste in this, because it's, it's not really a tomato-based curry, but I think I wanted some I think you need some sort of umami flavour in the background. You won't, you wouldn't taste the tomato in this really. You just perhaps, no, you'd feel that something was missing if it wasn't there. I think we're ready to turn the heat up now. Let me turn it up to as full as it will go on this stove. I'm going to start adding the base gravy, but. We've got 75 mils of base gravy. We did add it a little at a time to allow it to cook down and caramelise better. If you add it all at once, then um, it's, it's not going to cook right. It's going to sort of 
boil rather than fry, if you know what I mean. And while that's um, cooking down and I'm unnecessarily fiddling with it, see, you get some oil separation happening, which is a good sign, meaning the spices are, are um, being cooked properly. And around the edges, you'll start seeing some sort of crustiness, caramelization, call it what you will. Thanks. Rick Kendall in Cyprus from Burnley originally. Great. Uh, what size is the pan? It is, this one's a 28 cent, 26 centimeter diameter pan. It's, it's taller than I need, but it doesn't spit so much, you know, a bit less messy. And it's thin enough to sort of transfer the heat nicely. So you can see this, this um, caramelised bits forming around the edges and nice oil separation. I think we're about ready to add another, about another 75 mils <coughs> of the base gravy. How did I come up with the name of this curry? Well, it was simple. What do I call it? I, I was thinking of calling it black pepper curry, but it didn't sound very exotic. So I looked at the you know, what, what do Hindus call it? And, um, or what's it generally called in sort of the semi-universal language of South Asia? It's called Kali Merch. So I call it Kali Merch. It doesn't have a great sound to it, but it's, you know, it's what it is and it sounds exotic. Next thing we're going to add, the chicken, which is, um, almost cooked chicken thigh. I simmered this in base gravy for, from raw for um, for about 10, 15 minutes. And um, quite small pieces, so they will, it, by the time we've finished this curry, it'll, it'll all be cooked properly. Right, there's another guy, got a truly international audience today. Q with Chris, uh, lives in Berlin. Yeah, I wouldn't like to live in Berlin. Well, I could live anywhere in the world. Well, any, you can live anywhere in the world if you've got, if you know how to cook the BIR curries. But uh, not great for eating out curries, mostly I would imagine. Right, once again, it's reduced nicely. It's more caramelization forming. Add a greater proportion of base gravy this time. That's about 150, 150 milliliters. I'm going to stir once and I'm going to leave it so it can, can settle properly. It's good that you see the you get bits sticking sticking to the bottom of the pan. That's what you want. There's lots of lovely flavour in that. So we're going to stir that all back in and then leave that on its full full heat on this gas ring for a while longer. But we're also going to add at this point <clears throat> some Worcestershire sauce for a bit of depth, uh, some lemon juice and a bit of sugar, just about a teaspoon of sugar, that's all. This balances off things a little bit. Right, let's see what people are saying. Uh, Exit 11, it's an interesting nickname. Uh, he asks, can you get the same flavor if you are cooking lower all through cook, all through cook, but for longer, compared to high heat for quickness, right? Yes, um, to an extent, I believe um, you do need to reach a certain temperature to, to get the best results, uh, what they call the caramelization temperature, or also the Maillard reaction. Various temperatures above a certain amount, you get more flavor compounds released. However, having said that, um, you can produce really, really good curries on, on slightly lower heat and cook for longer. 
but I still believe the um, you get the edge if you have a higher heat. I mean, most importantly is is um, is to cook the, the spices out properly and and to make sure you caramelise the base gravy and you know making sure you don't you know, undercook anything or overcook anything too much. I think it typifies what the, the difference in flavour between say a traditional chicken on the bone curry um, cooked you know slowly for you know 45 minutes compared with a sort of fast cook um, ca caramelised version a lot more flavours uh, different flavours get get produced when you cook traditionally under slowly and you've got plenty of time for the flavour to develop but uh, in this uh, in the BIR cooking you you kind of you, you've already kind of made the curry in advance with the base gravy <laughs> if you know what I mean you, you you're kind of like assembling it together. It sounds a little bit fast foody. Well, it is fast foody, but uh, there's an enormous advantage in, in, in the temperature and the technique you use. So always try and use as, not, as much heat as you can at, at the appropriate time. So you don't want to burn ginger and garlic paste, for example, at the beginning if you're just adding it to oil. So that's coming along nicely. You hear that sort of crackling and sizzling. We've got oil separation and... Um, from still forming on the edges. What do I think is my best curry? I don't know. Uh, I mean, a lot of them are very popular. Let's add a touch more base gravy. While I'm yapping away, it's reducing. So let's just finish that off. Now, you see what's happening? scrape the, the bottom of the pan all that goodness back in it looks a little bit dry at the moment but we're going to add some cream and, and things shortly um what was the first bir curry you cooked and how did it turn out uh, i think it was a probably a chicken madras and it probably was um i probably thought it was good or reasonably good i was quite happy with what i produced you know, if you've never cooked something like that before and you suddenly realise you can and get somewhere near it, you know, it's a great moment and you kind of kid yourself that you've produced a really good curry, but you improve over time. I just can't remember, it was such a long time ago. Right. We can turn the heat down now. We're going to add some pre-cooked cauliflower. What I've done with this is it's kind of steamed it in the microwave in a container with a bit of water, salt and turmeric for about two and a half minutes, only till it's almost done. You don't want cauliflower that that disintegrates because uh, it's overcooked. You need, need a bit of texture. So that'll be nice. I'll go nice with the chicken and the black pepper. Right, and now I'm going to add some cream. It's about 60 millilitres, four tablespoons of single cream with the heat turned down low so the, the cream doesn't split. I added, uh, earlier on I added about just a teaspoon of chilli powder to this. But you can add as much as you want. You could add fr fresh chilies to this as well. Turn the heat back up a bit now. Now that the oil's mixed in. Right, so anyone cooking along? Mm. I'll just lick the spoon, I have to say. <coughs> Tasty. You get a black pepper like kick, num numbing your throat a bit. I love that. You could use other types of pepper with this as well. That's Sejuan peppercorns. But yeah, it's got a nice, um, a nice numbness to it.
Uh, STM asks, some others use a high output burner. Do you think that gives a better result than a domestic gas hub? Yes, I do. You can still produce really, really good results. Um, but just for that, getting that extra, extra temperature. But there are sort of little techniques you can use to try and compensate for things. You have to read, read my uh, text in volume one for that. Curry's getting a bit dry, what I've done. I used all the base gravy up, but I just added a bit of water to the pan, heated it up. Just gonna splash that up. Right, I'm not gonna plate this up today. I think I'm gonna eat it from the pan. Yeah, Richard, it's uh, the, the cream and yogurt. They just really kind of make the curry look so much better, don't they? You see these little dabs of dabs of oil that float to the surface. I think that's. I think we're about ready with that. I think we're, we're good. Now, just the final garnish. I'm gonna put a few spring onions in. Bit of coriander. And to final, finalize it, we've got some juliennes of ginger, which goes well with black pepper. Okay, how does that look? You know that looks just like the one in the book, the picture in the book. Held. Okay, shall we have a taste? Let's have a quick taste then. Cauliflower. Mmm. And try a bit of the chicken now. Cut that. Mm -hmm. mm. Really nice. Tender pieces of chicken thigh. Lovely flavour. Mm. Well, <clears throat> thank you very much for coming along. And apologies again for the slight cock up earlier with the vertical stroke horizontal orientation. Well, I'll be devouring this very shortly um, with, I think I'm going to have some pizza bread with it. So I hope everyone enjoyed today's session and uh, would anyone like to suggest what you'd like me to cook in a future cook along? Thanks Julie. Thanks everyone. Okay, just I'll summarize. People are going to want to go off and eat now, I presume. So this is chicken calumet, or chicken and cauliflower <clears throat> calumet. What would you call that? Gobi murchi, no, gobi murgi calumet, something like that. It's the recipes from my second book, Indian Restaurant Curry at Home, Volume 2, by Richard Saisme, which you can get at Amazon, Waterstones, all the good bookshops, um, Spicy Joe's sell them, as well as the volume one, of course. And also you'll find the recipe for this particular curry in um, on my website, one of a few I've selected from the books. So if you head over to mysteryricardo.com, that's where you'll find it. Right, on that note, I think we're done now. Uh, I'll bid you farewell. 
and thanks again. <laughs>